This is the Samsung Galaxy S9. Oh, wait, no, it's not. That's the S8. This is the Galaxy S9. Sorry for the confusion, but you've got to admit, it looks an awful lot like last year's, doesn't it? In fact, if you already own the S8, I'll tell you right now that you probably don't need to upgrade. But there is this one feature that really does border on the magical. I'm Michael Fisher, and this is a first look at the Samsung Galaxy S9, brought to you by dbrand. <laughs> Having established that the S9 and larger S9 Plus look almost identical to their predecessors, let's talk about what has changed, okay? Samsung seems to have taken the feedback about the S8's wonky fingerprint sensor to heart. The new one is kind of small, but it's now positioned beneath the camera instead of alongside it. And good news, you can still use it to drop the notification shade. The iris scanner and face unlock are also there, if you prefer those to the fingerprint. Samsung has finally upped its audio game with the S9. The earpiece pulls double duty as one of two AKG-tuned speakers with Dolby Surround. The other is a side-firing port in its usual spot on the bottom edge. Samsung says the combined output is 1.4 times louder than the S8, which makes sense, double the speakers, right? And it's also one of the few companies to retain the headphone jack. Speaking of, remember DeX, the dock that turns your phone into a sort of computer? Well, the new DeX pad is intended as the more portable solution. And uh, to justify the segue I just set up, it now leaves the headphone jack accessible when the phone is plugged in. It also lets you use the phone as a trackpad, and resolution support now tops out at 2K. Now, you still can't just plug in a cable to enable DeX. It needs external power. The plus side to that is that the phone charges while you're using it, and the DeX pad has a fan to keep it cool. Still, I do wish you had the option of just plugging in a USB to HDMI cable, like you can on the Mate 10 Pro. The S9's other improvements walk the line between convenience and cruft. It's no surprise to see Bixby here, since Samsung has shown no signs of giving up on its virtual assistant. But the most useful part of the new Bixby has been cribbed from elsewhere. This feature that converts foreign into native language is powered by Google Translate. The other functions, like pointing your camera at food to get a calorie count and trying on virtual makeup that you can then go on and buy. Look, I'm not saying it's not fun, but it's the kind of thing I expect most folks to use once and then forget about forever. And while I'm picking Bixby's nits, I'm still annoyed the button doesn't have any texturing to help you tell it apart from the volume rocker. Yeah, get ready for another year of Bixby pop-ups every other time you try to turn down your ringer. So what's the magic sauce? The camera. First off, if you're buying for the optics, you'll probably want to spring for the Plus model since it's got a secondary camera for telephoto shots, like the Note 8. But the primary one up top is where the wizard lives. Stick with me through the numbers here. There's a mechanical aperture capable of stops from 2.4 all the way up to 1.5 and a dedicated block of dynamic RAM as well. So when you fire it, the camera captures the equivalent of 12 photos at once. And once it processes and applies some GPU magic, the result on paper is an up to 30% reduction of noise. TLDR, you should get better night shots with much less grain. Now, here's the stuff that caught my eye. Remember that Sony XZ Premium I reviewed last summer with the epic slow motion video? Well, Samsung basically lifted that feature for the S9. Hit the super slow-mo and this thing can shoot at 960 frames per second for a very quick burst, stretching out 0.2 seconds into over 6 seconds of normal playback speed. The resolution takes a hit, it's only 720p in this mode, but it is a bit smarter than Sony's implementation in that you can set it to automatically trigger once it sees movement. I know, it's a niche thing, but take it from me, you'll have more fun with this than you expect. The question is, will the rest of this phone justify its expected, typically top shelf pricing? We'll find out in the full review soon. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss it. And if you do decide the Galaxy S9 is the phone for you, it'll be available in four colors March 16th, with pre-orders opening March 2nd. Folks, you saw how beat up and knocked around my Note 8 and S8 Plus were in that side-by-side -side shot, right? Avoid making Mr. Mobile's mistakes with a premium vinyl skin from today's sponsor, dbrand. 
Come on, you know the deal by now. Dbrand has the best phone skins in the business, and they cater to tastes both subtle and gross. Customize your Galaxy S9 skins at the link in the description below and tell them Mr. Mobile sent you. Finally, friends, the Galaxy S9 may be the biggest phone I'm going to see this week, but it's far from the only one. Follow the fun live from Mobile World Congress in Barcelona on my Instagram feed at the Mr. Mobile. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.